Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Hallmarkies Podcast, a Mahogany Cast edition with your hosts, Jasmine and Dory. And don't worry, Anne and Bree are listening as well. They're busy prepping for our holiday decor this holiday season. So we're going to take <laughs> over this summer love situation and get to it. How are you doing today, Dory? I'm great. I'm excited to be back. It's been so long since we've chatted about a movie so i am ready to go how are you i am doing well it's been a great summer so far summer love i guess you can call it (laughs) i don't know what to call it though but i'm glad that there are some rom-coms out there that will ease my pain (laughs) yes you have had an eventful summer to say the least (laughs) that part too you as well traveling across back to the east coast don't play (laughs) i know i know we have We have both been very busy. So, um, yeah, we are excited to be reunited and talking about Lifetimes Tempted by Love, um, starring Garcelle Beauvais, who I freaking love because I am a Real Housewives of Beverly Hills fan. Period. And also, (laughs) you can't forget the fact that she is Fanny from the Jamie Foxx show. Amen. Amen. Love her. So let's jump into it. You want me to read the synopsis for this movie? Go right ahead. All right. This is a Terry McMillan presentation. First and foremost, we bow down. Period. Um, <laughs> Ava, a renowned chef, chef from Europe, rushes to South Carolina when her aunt suffers a fall. Luke, her younger driver, sparks an unexpected unexpected connection as they bond over their shared passions, leaving Ava to decide between love and her career. Dun, dun, dun. And let me tell you guys this out there. When this first dropped, when the trailer dropped, uh, even Rachel said it to me. She's like, this seemed like it's going to be some type of like thriller. Mind you, wholeheartedly, I believe this wouldn't be a rom-com. I don't care what the trailer predicted and come to find out. This was a rom-com, y'all. Lifetime out here, and they bagging rom-coms out here in these streets. I see you, Lifetime. And also, I want to give Lifetime a shout-out because you blessed me with an amazing movie for my birthday weekend. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks, Lifetime. So I take it you loved this one. Tell me how you felt about it. Yeah. It 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 was a breath of fresh air, but also it gave me kind of like a retelling of how still like our groove back mm-hmm. and if you put the movie from netflix a perfect fine together they made a baby with this so there's no parents involved in their relationship <laughs> <laughs> yeah i thought it was good um i didn't know what to expect because i honestly i saw i think when i texted you and i was like okay, I want to watch this. We should do an episode. I think I had seen on Instagram um, just some stills from the movie of the cast. And I was like, you know what? I'm all in on all of these beautiful black legends. Iconic. Icons. I was so here for it. Um, Loretta Devine was in it for a hot second. That is Mm -hmm. one of my biggest complaints. I was like, why do we only get 30 seconds with our girl? Because I love her so much. You know what? Twitter um, had the same thing when wondering where's Angela at? Where's Angela <laughs> back today? I'm like, you know what? My birthday twin is somewhere living her best life right now. And it could have been a great way to exhale moment, but maybe next time. You have the same birthday as Angela Bassett? Of course. Me and Angela have the same birthday, as well as Madonna. Um, Reginald, who played the dad on um, Family Manners. Okay. I also also have a a country um, singer uh, named Ajima, Steve Carell. And also the guy um, that plays on Zoe's Story Playlist, the black guy. I forgot his name. Last name is Stuart. I don't know how I forgot his name, but yes. He's, he's good to look at. <laughs> Girl, all yes. these Leos in the house. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> Leo season. And we, it's still Leo season, right? For a it's couple more days. One more day. One more day. Okay. And then after that, we go into Virgos, but we go still party until like, you know, next fire signs come through. Sages. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. So like we were saying, there were so many amazing black legendary actresses in this movie. Um, Donna Bisco was in this, like I mentioned, Loretta Devine and um, Leela Rashawn, who stole the show for me. She played a friend of mm-hmm. Garcelle Bouvet's in this, um, her character's name. Yes. Um, and she was delightful. She was so funny. She owned a like dog spa, which I loved. <laughs> I, I thought love that. that was I, so that, cute. Too. I love that. <laughs> I know. I thought that was so cute. Um, and she she was very encouraging to Ava. She was like, you know, encouraging her to just follow her heart which we all need that friend right and she was so supportive and yeah i thought that she was so fun so i'd love to see leela rashawn in more movies give me more yes give us more and in the fact that like even online like i literally did the watch party with everybody online including with the uh writer for this project as well um to mary jeffrey and man she is in her bag like i'm gonna need her to talk to homework like her writing is top tier y'all and um the way that um some of us were talking like how they gave paid homage to her character from Wayne exhale how like she had her little dog like she gave her a little dog shop i was like that's super cute <laughs> i know i love that adorable ho 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 we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies patreon do you love hallmarkies podcast especially at christmas Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. So I'm curious to know. So in this movie, Ava is a chef. She is a chef at a Michelin star restaurant. And you find out throughout the movie that she has been the head chef at like several restaurants several Michelin star restaurants. So she is like top of her game. Amazing. So I wanted to talk to you about the food aspect of the movie because I thought they knocked it out of the park. I was watching it starving every cooking scene, every food scene living for it. It it just, it just reminds me like, you know what? I never been to one of those type of restaurants before. Like I heard about five star restaurants stuff, but like a Michelin restaurant, like, getting a star like i am down i put that on my bucket list for year 35 that i want to go to one of those restaurants i want to experience top cuisine that yes. food was amazing like every it didn't matter where you were at in the movie for food it was just it was speaking to my soul <laughs> i know and she talks about it in the movie how the reason she loves european um because she works she comes from europe to south carolina And she has worked in Europe for most of her career. And she says it's because um, dining in Europe is more of an experience. Um, And so, yeah, she really got me wanting to (laughs) get on a plane, fly, (laughs) fly to Europe and have an amazing, amazing um, dining experience. So, yes, we will both put that on our lists for the coming year. Yes. and I can but, tell you this, I can tell you this, Dor- uh, Dory, that I've done the fine dining in European um, cuisine. And let me tell you something. It is like beautiful at the same time as like slower pace. Like you don't have to rush for your food to get cleared up, like get the leave. Like, no, it's just like you can be there two to four hours just having a great time, just eating four course meals and just like 
basking in every of the flavors like you need to do that I also loved the opening scene where she's so she's in a kitchen and she's kind of she really has command of the kitchen and it says I thought it was a fun way to use her career as a way to show how kind of where she's at in life and how she is experienced and in command and a mentor to a lot of the other, you know, people in the kitchen and she's creative and able to think on her feet and artistic. And I don't know, I just, I really loved seeing a black woman as a chef, you know, and as a chef in Europe, um, in the culinary scene, I thought that that was really cool. And then we find out when she makes it to South Carolina, we find out that that is a shared passion (laughs) with her, (laughs) (laughs) with her and her man. And let me tell you, he is so cute. Yeah. (laughs) If y'all didn't go listen to the perfect fine, I was talking about keep um, powers. Let me tell you something about bonds. Y'all. He stole my heart. I know. I know. You did that, boo. You did that. You you nailed this role. And like someone said online, I'm going to repeat this. Um, the Keisha said this online on Twitter. She was like, and Von Herborn nailed this role. He was a problem in the absolute best way this entire movie. Yeah. He was, um, so his character's name is Luke. And Luke was uh, not giving up for one second because of course she has you know he's 31 she's 50 and he um is very um forward and very clear about his intentions he meets her he drives her from the airport to her to the hospital to visit her aunt who has fallen and is injured and he you can tell he is into her instantly instantly He, when he drops her off, he gives her his number and he's like, if you, if you ever need a ride or if you just want somebody to show you around town, like I'm your man. <laughs> and she's like, this is a child. Like I am not <laughs> giving him. In, in my thirties. I'm like, I, know. I feel it in my bones. <laughs> I know. She's like, I'm not giving him the time of day, but he is very persistent and confident and he does not let up. And I appreciated that confidence in young Luke. I really did. I do. Man, take notes, please. <laughs> <laughs> the magic A, take notes. <laughs> So then we find out that Luke is a former baseball player. He had an injury that ended his career. And so he is working. I think he's working at a store. Yeah. He's working town. at like a, yeah, a hardware store. He's the manager. And then also he does like um, a car service on the side to make a little extra money. But his real passion is food and cooking. And they really connect um, over that. And he's very intimidated, like, to cook with her and to cook for her. But she recognizes his talent. And I love the first time that she eats his food. She's in the hospital. It's New Year's Day. And her aunt is like, Where is I don't my- know what you got going on, but you better get me some black eyed peas. Which, if that was me in the hospital on New Year's Day, I'd be saying the same thing. Like, okay. I, can't, I can't remember the last time I didn't have black eyed peas on New Year's Day. I don't, I, I don't think I've ever not had it. No, it's a tradition, y'all. It is a tradition to have black eyed peas. It's a tradition to have some collard greens, okay? Collard greens. Okay, yep. so cornbread. Mm-hmm. If you want, you could definitely add, you know, fish. Fish is an option as well. Mm-hmm. Get some so, pork in there, you know? A bit pork for luck. We, we mm-hmm. need that. Amen. So she's not messing around. Her her aunt is like, I made you laid up in this bed, but you will get me my black eyed peas. And so Luke comes, he brings um, some Hop and John, which is a mix of all those things. And that's the first time that Ava tastes his cooking and she's really impressed. And it's a connection for them for the rest of the movie, which is fun. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It was just like, you know, I'm not gonna lie. And Judy, that is my... I, we I swear we have an aunt that's like her. <laughs> we all do. We she all do. Take, she thought she thought um, his mom made the food and stuff. Like I'm gonna eat this. I'm like no, I made this, Miss Judy. It, it, like 
she had to pause, like, hold up. Who gave you the blessing to make the black eyed peas like any other household on family functions? You cannot be experimenting not with the macaroni and cheese, not with the black eyed peas. <laughs> None of that. Who gave you permission to pass this on for you to carry this torch? She was. <laughs> and she was shocked when it was delicious. She so was. was. Shocked. So we then find out um, that Ava can't drive. And so this is how Luke and Ava spend most of the movie together. He's driving her around. Mm -hmm. He even teaches her (laughs) to drive at some point, (laughs) at one point, which was funny. And um, they start spending time together. The chemistry is undeniable. She is still very resistant. And my question to you is, do you understand her resistance? Like, what are your thoughts on the whole cougar thing, the whole older woman, younger man? Like, do you understand why Ava's kind of like not trying to get into that? You know what? It is a taboo topic, which... I swear it happens. I'm not sure about globally though, but I know for sure here in the states, wise, like she made a good point in the movie that that women who date younger men are called cougars, and when men date younger women, they're lucky. There's there's no like you know, oh that's yeah. normal, that's normal. But when a woman does it, it's like you're not supposed to be doing that. Someone's child, like like why would you do that? And it's just like the double standard, and she doesn't want to be labeled as a double standard. Whereas we got Luke over here telling us in the movie that you know he's old enough to consent but young enough to back it up now baby (laughs) (laughs) now that was a line that was a line yes so yeah and i understand where she's coming from too because you feel like you're in different stages in life right Mm, like true 51 he's 31 and then we see later in the movie that that becomes a real point of contention is they're they're just at different points in their lives different trajectories and so you understand her hesitation like I understood her hesitation but I also feel like true love and love feels very rare and I mean I don't know I just hope that if I, if I was ever faced with her situation, that I would be brave enough to go after that kind of love, even if it felt scary, because I think it always feels scary in some way, you know? So, yeah, so Ava's resistant, but it doesn't matter because <laughs> Luke don't care, and he is going to get his woman, and they have a first date. They sure do. And he cooks for her and he cooks her food. He cooks one of her meals. That part. Amazing. And she loves it. He does a great job. And they have s'mores and they have a little dance. Don't they, Jazz? Girl. (laughs) Girl. Wait, when she said, when she talked about, like, I promise you I'm taking you dance. Like, you know, let me know. I'm getting up there right now. Like, I'm tired. I need a nap before I go to the clubs. Like. Like, I can't do this. Like, no, he brought the club to her, put some music. I sat here like, this is a perfect first date. I know. It was a very sweet first date. And they keep spending time together. After We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's Factor Meals. Warmer, sunnier days are calling. Fuel up for them with Factor's no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals in time for summer thanks to the menu of chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasty meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. Crush your wellness goals this month with dietitian approved meals and ingredients you can trust. Make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert. Stay fueled with easy, nutritious options. Treat yourself to restaurant quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, and blackened salmon. Keep kitchen time to a minimum. Factory 
meals are ready in two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Enjoy effortless support for your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well-balanced. Head to factormeals.com slash hallmarkies50 and use code hallmarkies50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code hallmarkies50 at factormeals.com slash hallmarkies50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Definitely check out Factor Meals. We know you'll love them. So I want to talk about the moment with the ex-girlfriend. Girl, when they I have <laughs> girl, I had notes today. <laughs> Share your notes. What were your what were your thoughts on this scene? Okay, because first of all, she'll want to pit okay, Zadie, that's her name. She'll want to like his phone, Luke's phone in the beginning of the movie in the car. Okay. Kept blowing like 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 she is like dying. But when she runs into them at the park, she's like, Oh, this is your driving Miss Daisy. I was like excuse me so rude so thank you how about you need to call me we need to talk about something which i still need to know what they had to talk about because i thought this might be tempted with love that she's gonna be some type of like plot twist of she's gonna kill you know their story and that didn't happen so i guess that'd be like another like you know behind the headline or something i don't know but she was definitely jealous she was definitely jealous and they both had some relationship baggage too because oh yeah definitely ava had been with a guy oh yeah (laughs) amor that boy Mm -hmm. and she finds out that he is engaged he calls her and he says i want to propose at a restaurant you used to work at and she said propose we've only been broken up for three months and then she puts it together that he had been dating his soon to be fiance while they were still together. So they both have a little relationship baggage <laughs> that and they're bringing you, into this. And mind you, oh boy was dating his son's teacher. Yes. <laughs> it was wild. Wild. Boy, bye. That's all I was going to say is boy, bye. And for him to have the audacity to ask her for a favor, it's like you're asking her to set up your engagement with the woman you cheated on her with. Please, the audacity. The audacity. That part. part. I'm just saying, like, he cry cry. So we also, so through the course of the movie, um, it's it becomes clear that Luke's passion for cooking is something he wants to do and thinks he can pursue it as a career. And so he decides that he is going to apply to culinary school in Zurich. And he is excited about this because it's only 90 minutes away from Paris where Mm -hmm. Ava is trying to get a job or so he thinks. (laughs) Actually, actually, she will be in Zurich in Zurich. See area he will be in pair that were calling blues at so, oh switch okay switch so switch, he switch would it. be in he would be in paris she would be in zurich 90 minutes but still 90 minutes away from each other and it sounds mm-hmm. like the perfect plan sounds like a perfect plan <laughs> until okay. it's not so we also we didn't mention that another um kind of cool aspect of this movie is there is representation for chronic illness because yes. Cuba, Ava has rheumato- rheumatoid arthritis. And so it has been impacting her ability to do her job because obviously if you're a chef, you use your hands that all the part. time. So um, she has been struggling and she needs a break. And that's part of why she stays in South Carolina a little longer while she figures out her next move because the pressure and the schedule uh, of being a chef at her level in Europe was too much for her. Yeah. Like, well, let's keep it real. Like they, 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 they cut her loose y'all. Like they, they, they terminated her. They, they fell for that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm okay. And Judy, she said this quote, she said, sometimes good luck has to slap you in the face to get your attention. Yeah, it's true. And she also, um, the other thing that I appreciated about that, 
aspect of the storyline was that she doesn't tell Luke that she has rheumatoid arthritis. He can see something is wrong with her hands. He thinks it's carpal tunnel. And, but she is afraid to share with him that she has this chronic illness because she thinks it will make her less desirable, make her seem older, Mm. um, make her seem like a burden. And so I thought it was a really, you know, I like that they added that because that's very real. Like all the things we think are going to make us unlovable, especially as we get older. And eventually she comes clean to Luke and he says, you know, I just want to help you heal. I want to be a part of your healing. I just want to help you through this. You know, it doesn't make me think less of you. It doesn't make me love you less. And I liked that. I think that that's an important message that, you know, with the right person, they just want to help you and support you, not judge you or think you're unworthy um, because of an illness. That part. And I love that too, because it also mirrored his, um, his um, ACL injury as well. Like I've been through the same thing that you've been like, it doesn't have to be an in, like an in career moment. It could be redirecting you to something else. And I love the fact that like, even they even highlighted a little bit about um, menopause as well. Cause you're getting older as well. <laughs> hot flashes. I was like, Oh wow. Like, like he's handling it. Like, well, like, no, my mom had hot flashes. I'm like, Oh, I know I should be hotter. I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm not there yet, but I don't want to get there yet. (laughs) He's very serious and very sure about her. And so all of the little things that she's so insecure about and so like nervous about, he does not care. He takes it in stride. And I really do appreciate that about that character. Um, But then we run into an issue because Luke gets into culinary school in Paris and (laughs) <laughs> which is good for him great love to see it and he thinks this is great news he thinks that Ava's going to be in Zurich it's going to be all good and she breaks the news to him that she's actually not going to go to Zurich she's not leaving she's staying in South Carolina and she got did she get where did she get a job at a hotel it was at this hotel remember she was jogging past this one hotel that her yes. friend mentioned and then I guess she's overseeing like 10 hotels and stuff because of like the culinary scene and stuff. And that man, that, 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 that was, that was the climax of the whole movie. Y'all. I didn't know what to do in that scene. I was like, Lord, I know why? that was, I know that felt very unexpected because you think this whole time that they're just going to fly off to Europe together and everything's going to be amazing, but no. Um, and so they have to come to terms with what they're going to do because Luke is incredibly talented and he gets into one of the best culinary schools in the world. And she obviously doesn't want him to pass that up, but Mm -hmm. he doesn't want to leave her. And so the question becomes, what are they going to do? Yeah. And this is where. I became furious. <laughs> at oh, I this cried. Movie. I cried. I was furious at the end of this movie. So in the end, Luke goes to Paris. Spoiler alert. Spoiler, y'all. Luke goes to Paris and Ava stays and she basic she breaks up with him. She says, you need to go. And be a 31-year-old in the city of love and explore and grow and learn. And hopefully you will find your way back to me. Because they are just in different stages of life, which makes sense. Yeah. And then (laughs) she drops him off at the airport. She runs in and says, I just need you. I can't let you leave without letting you know how I feel about you. I love you. And she gives him this beautiful chef's jacket with his name embroidered on it. And they say goodbye. And the the movie ends. And there is no one year later. There is no five years later. There is no 10 years later. And I was sitting there watching the credits roll pissed off because I was like, where's my, where is my epilogue? Where is my one year later seeing them reunite? Nope, nothing. Dory, nothing. Dory, like Dory. 
we're campaigning for a, for a uh, part two because no way they gonna leave us like this. They no way she's gonna give us this beautiful one time about the perfect dish is having the right ingredients at the right time. The ingredients are experience that we bring to one pot. I need to know what happens. We all need to know. You're I not can't gonna believe leave this. me here. You're not gonna leave me here crying at the airport departure spot, watching my man fly to Paris. Like, 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 blah, blah, blah. But, you know, he be 34 in December. But, anyway, but like, they built everything up. Like, even when they had their little date at the, you know, when they met up at the, the pool area, like, Everything was going perfect, like a wrong con supposed to. And then you leave us with this cliffhanger. I thought like I was watching a 23 um, season show and they gave me like, literally a playbook out of Ab Ab elementary. What happened with Janine and Gregory? Like, I need to know. <laughs> I know it was a brutal ending and I was not expecting that. I really thought that we would get some sort of re resolution and we would see them together again. And we did not. And I am still angry about it. I, I was actually watching with my mom and at the end, my mom was just like, that's it. It's over. <laughs> she couldn't believe it. She was so mad and I was mad too. So that is my biggest gripe with this movie was the ending. I was so sad that we didn't get to see them reunite. And it's open ended now. We don't know. I mean, like, like will we, they we, do a will they do a sequel? We don't know. We 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 pushing it online. We're saying we need a season two. We tell Terry, like, <laughs> Terry, we need a part two. You're not gonna leave us like this. And even though it left us with this type of ending. I know there was some great moments in the movie that I'm going to forever cherish, forever going to keep cheesing about to forever. <laughs> I know. Like, I know. Like, it was amazing. Like, I'm not going to lie. Even like the pool scene when they were like, um, like challenging, like, like you, if, you, if you make a shot, like you have to take a shot. I was like, that was super cute. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sitting here like online I'm over here. And I'm like, I will pretend to not know how to play pool. So that his arm can wrap around my waist and whisper <laughs> things in my ear <laughs> with my Tamar uh, gif, like, ah. <laughs> like, literally. Yeah. Like, it was just like, and then I love her line in, in the movie too. She talks about, like, you know, like, you better, you better have your bathroom clean. He'll bathroom up on the floor. And it was just beautiful. But even like the way I wrote a lot of Luke, um, Luke monsters down because Luke was just. That pin game was strong. Like his quotes were like effortless. Like he just says, "Let me see, let me find it," because I wrote it everywhere on my paper. But he talks about how like I, I'm like I want to take you somewhere where you never gone before. And I sat here like, God, <laughs> you are delivering these lines too well that I think I am the star of this movie with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he. The thing that was so fun about Luke was that he had a response for everything. He had every, you know, every time she tried to shoot him down, he had to come back. Like he, he sure was did. not going quietly. He had a response for her every second of the day, which was hilarious to see. I loved it. And we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Literally, he like literally, I remember even if like the first time they got food together, and he's talking about, you know, when remember when the waitress was flirting, flirting with him, like Vita, I was mm -hmm. like, Vita, I'm Vita, like, I need you to like 
go to the left because that's not your man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was like, like, because um, Ava was like, oh, like, you know, I got you a lot of girls, like, you know, come up to you. Like, he had like a little geeky moment, like, like, well, I am, you know, I call it educated, employed, no kids, black man from a nice knit type family. I say, you're like, this is the resume I want. This is the resume I want. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I sat here like this is the person they so what a delight. I really liked this movie. I thought it was cute. I know me too. And you know what? I'm loving like the way the direction is going over there with Lifetime. You know, you know, we wait for like the holiday movies to show up or we wait to watch our still like our killer movies and stuff like that, like right from the headlines. But this was just so delightful for the month of August mm-hmm. that I'm excited for the next installment um, for Terry McMillan to come up this weekend, which is entitled Forever. I want to give them like a snippet of what it's going to be about. because I'm excited for this movie. It really stars Tay Diggs and Megan Good. Megan and, you know what, yeah, and I know what I love about this is the fact that we're bringing some of the um, stars from the 90s um, movies that were based off the books into this production which I love so much. And also, they're EPs on this project, too. Both of them. So let me, let me give you a little snippet of what this um, movie's about. So, a veteran falls head over heels for a local policewoman after returning to his hometown. However, to win her heart, he must also win the approval of her three teenage daughters. That is a tall task. Can yeah. he do it? Can uh, you do it, Tay? Hey, can you do it? Because right now, this is giving me the opposite version of Daddy's Little Girl, except for I hope there's no drug dealing situation happening. But other than <laughs> that, that what it's giving. And you know what? Megan has been like been killing the game in these um, light type movies. Tag is, you know, he's he's doing his thing, you know, on Broadway, off Broadway. So I'm excited to see these two pair up. I don't remember them even pairing up for a movie, to my knowledge. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they've ever been in anything together before. So this will be fun. I mean, all of the promos look good. It looks very intriguing. I feel very invested in the story. Um, so yeah, it's been cool. These is that another Terry McMillan one? It is. It is. Yeah, we, we got we got two back to backs. Okay, so let us yeah. know if you want us to review forever a Terry McMillan presentation because we're down if you're down. <laughs> Yeah, I've been liking these Terry McMillan um, productions. I think it's cool. I think it's fun to see some, I mean, you know, I think we see so many characters in their 20s and their 30s. So it's nice to see um, some main characters 40 and beyond. And I'd love to see more of that. And I'm glad Lifetime is doing it. They are. And I'm glad, like, like I said, for the first time in a very long time, so we, so people have been talking about this online. Where are our black rom coms? And I felt like I got a black rom com. Like, yeah, it didn't end like we wanted to end, but you left it open any for us to know what happens to them. We want to know. I know. I feel like I feel like every time we talk, we're talking about how we just don't have enough good black rom coms, and you know that has not changed. We're still waiting i was watching um re-watching survival of the thickest this week that's crazy i'm gonna do the exact same thing this weekend <laughs> yes yes because i miss it and i i want more i want more stories like that i want more shows like that movies like that um mm-hmm. so yeah so thank you thank you terry mcmillan thank you terry for giving us <laughs> for giving Nikon us icon in this black you know, love thank yes. you because it was black and it was love and I felt it and all of a sudden I just have in my head of literally voice and men playing at the end of like still how I grew back like you know we like, like a voice and song you guys would know that song it like is on my it's in my head I just can't sing the word but I, know, I can hear the, like the melody of it so far across the sea I can hear you calling me yes <laughs> uh, only only real still how I grew back would know that voice and men song at the end of the credits <laughs> Yes, a classic. If you have not seen once how Stella got her groove back, it's yes. a classic, a must see, and also a Tay Diggs. 
Exactly. And also, and also the fact that, like, give it to Lifetime as well, because they were actually airing a lot of Terry Millen's work as well. Lady Exhale was airing. Then we had um, Tinted by Love came out. And then we had um, Hustle Girl Ruback was airing as well after that. So it was, it's just amazing that, you know, that audience are getting to see Terry Millen's work beforehand. And now they get to see it now. Like, oh, wow. Like, she'd been doing it back then. Now she's still going strong. I'm like, and also, lastly, it needs to be said, Lifetime. I need to know every song that was the soundtrack to this movie because I need that in my playlist because you ain't going to take me up and down in this playlist that was like top tier and not give me the soundtrack. I'm just saying. It was a great soundtrack. I agree. Um yeah, drop <laughs> drop the playlist, please. Lifetime, please. And lastly, on Judy's outfit with that one with that black jumper, she ate. <laughs> cute. Her clothes were so cute in this right? movie. Like, she yeah. looked cute in everything, even when she went jogging and just her she leggings should. and her jacket. She looked cute. Like that she part. she looks beautiful. Garcelle is giving. She looks amazing. And she was an EP on this project as well for attempted. Good um, for her. Get your yeah, coins. That part because she's also been other um, lifetime movies as well. Just make sure you just check those out and. Last and not least, they did drop Aaliyah joint AJ, but a number. So I was like, hey. <laughs> gotta do it. I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do, do it. it. And just also, <laughs> lastly, before we leave, like, I did shout out to uh, Un Judy because she's like, I ain't back to my story. So all the grandparents, all the aunties who watched us as a growing up, I knew nine and ten. She's gonna watch her stories because she had to watch Victor Newman on Young and the Restless. I know she was gonna watch Victor Newman. <laughs> okay. I said what I said. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We all we all had that family member. Um, and it's why I grew up watching General Hospital. So that there we part, go. All my children were both beautiful. Like we were there. We knew what was happening. It didn't matter how far we left out and came back. We got up real quick. Like, okay. Like to this day, I still can't watch Neil's funeral. Sorry. Oh, RIP. I know. That was so sad. Like to this day, I still cannot watch it. Like, that's how hard it is. I know. I know. It's sad. Well, thank you everyone for listening. And I hope that, you know, if you watch this movie, if you watch Tempted by Love, um, we'd love to hear your thoughts. So come find us, talk to us online and let us know how you felt about the movie. Definitely. Where they can find you, Dory? Um, you can find me at all the feels pod on Twitter or at Dory Benford on Twitter, either one. And um, listen to all the feels podcast wherever you download your podcasts. Um, we will be, <laughs> I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this, but we will be in a matter of, you know, two months, we will be back recording Christmas episodes. So prepare yourselves. <laughs> hey, everybody, be prepared. <laughs> prepare in my yourselves. We, this is the, this is the two month countdown. We are on countdown to christmas watch so everybody get excited <laughs> and you guys can find me at shareem 16 s-h-r-e-e-m-1-6 on twitter and also on instagram while everyone's getting ready for the holidays the pop-up you guys can catch me with my cup of hot apple cider a donut and getting ready for fall movies because i'm not getting to christmas yet so i at least get me at least a couple of fall movies in y'all <laughs> preach <laughs> Okay. And also make sure you guys um, check out Hallmarkies podcast, wherever you listen to um, iTunes, YouTube, wherever you locate us, just come listen and just leave a thumbs up for us. Um, drop your comments in, like, like, let us know what's going on. What movies that we should be reviewing? Like, let us know what, what's the Mahogany cast, what we could be listening to watching and talking about, like, it could be Odie, but goody, it could be something that is going to pop up. Let us know. And till next time, you guys, you know, we love you guys. We love chatting and can't wait for the next movie to come out. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.